I've recently covered the Supernova SN1987A and how this could be interpreted in a totally different way by looking at Thornhill's concept of electric stars and what happens when they go supernova. We've also covered Peratt's concept of pulsars and seen that these can also sometimes be left as remnants of supernova explosions. Scientists have been searching for many years to see if there was indeed any remnant from this famous supernova explosion, and up until recently, nothing had turned up. Let's explore what this image might reveal. Ever since astronomers witnessed one of the brightest explosions of a star in the night sky, they have been searching for a compact object that should have formed in the leftovers from this event. On the same day we witnessed the explosion, there was a noted increase in neutrinos from this general direction. Because of this, astronomers suspect that a neutron star had formed in the collapsed centre of the star. For decades they eagerly awaited for the dust or our imaging to improve to be able to observe if there was either a black hole or a neutron star at the centre. Recent observations from the ALMA radio telescope provided the first indication that there was something left at the centre. Extremely high resolution images revealed a hot blob in the dusty core of SN1987A, which is much brighter than its surroundings and matches the suspected location of a neutron star. At this stage, however, this is not a confirmation, as they are not able to image beyond the gas cloud to see what lies behind it. So how does this fit in with the Electric Universe model? In this model, the star effectively shorts out the main Birkeland current for a short period of time, and this massive discharge then causes the double layers across the surface to explode, expelling matter outwards. In the most extreme cases, this would leave almost nothing behind, but in most cases the core of the star remains, and this is most likely a rocky body. The question is whether this rocky body could potentially seed a reconnection. From the deep dive into Jürgen's model and the later conversation with Wall and Don, we know that the current flows in at both poles and out at the equator. Some catalyst is required to kickstart this star process, but if we examine these images, I see something rather remarkable. First, if we look at the zoomed out image, I can clearly make out a cone shape at the top and one below the central cloud. Then when we examine the bright blob, we also see a plume extending at the top and the bottom. Could part of the ejected core become the seed for a new much smaller star? Now this central structure is only visible in radio and this shows low levels of excitement in that central cloud and a much higher excitement in the yellow brighter area. Are we witnessing this initial formation process where the connection is re-established? Now this does raise some interesting questions. What happens to the incoming current after the supernova event? With a large part of the material being ejected outwards, this should leave an imbalance between the central filament and the heliopores of the old star. In order for current to flow inwards, there has to be current flowing outwards. In the case of the electric star, this is normally along the equatorial axis as the solar wind. If we examine the image, is this exactly what we are seeing? Does the bulge represent an outflow of material in the equatorial axis? If there is indeed outflowing material at this equatorial axis, does this mean we have already established a new solar circuit? Is the reason it is only visible in radio due to the cloud obscuring the light? Or is there simply not enough inflowing electrons to form tufts or make the plasma sheath glow? And this comes back to the question of what causes the initial formation process to start. Was it some leftover piece from the original star, creating a sort of imperfection that initiates that process? Or is it simply the remains of plasma having a slightly higher density at a certain point, which initiates the process, creating a pinch which draws in more material? Now, it may also be possible that what we are seeing is more the initial formation process, so that plasma itself is rearranging itself into a torus around a central structure and that the outflowing material has not connected to the outer filaments yet. Assuming this is an accurate representation of the pixels captured, 
The hook shape at the bottom is another interesting feature. Now it could be a very twisted filament, or it may be part of a larger structure that is not completely visible in the radio image. By studying this over the coming years, will it reveal more about exactly how stars operate and how they function? Now we do need to be cautious, as although they claim this is an extremely high resolution image, it has many striking artifacts of the M87 image. Now, both these images are captured using the ALMA array of telescopes, but in the case of the M87 image, this also included other telescopes from around the world. I just wonder whether the algorithms that they used to create and effectively select the data for the M87 image was somehow used on this image in order to sort of clean up the data so therefore, the question is, is this an artifact of that process or is it just a coincidence? Maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe this is just simply the structure that is there. I will leave you to make up your own mind. As always, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.